have filmed this video at least half a dozen times and I always find an excuse not to release it. I'll tell myself there's too much background noise. It's windy outside. I didn't explain myself well enough or there's a piece of fuzz on my shirt. Then I'll trash the entire video and start with a new project. But not today, Christy. Nope. As it turns out, I need to practice what I preach. <laughs> Progress over perfection. You've got this. Just keep going, don't give up. Before I get started, I do feel like I need to clarify a few things. First, I have a tendency to ramble, over explain things, talk too much, get off subject. And that's probably for a couple of different reasons. The brain fog that I'm experiencing, plus nervousness and anxiety. I'm gonna try to not make this video super long, but it is gonna have a little bit of a story time in it, so you can see where this might go. Second, and this one, is important. My content isn't changing. Just because I'm no longer focusing on keto or being in ketosis, it doesn't mean that you have to go anywhere. I'm gonna be putting out a lot of the same videos, like what I eat in a day, low carb grocery hauls, but hopefully this is gonna give me a chance to expand a little bit. Basically step out of my comfort zone. New content will be based on what my channel revolves around. A low carb lifestyle, weight loss, the struggles we encounter on that journey, and hopefully motivation. Stick around, don't leave. And third, I am not a doctor or a healthcare professional. I'm just sharing my journey and my experience with you guys. I'm going to begin with a recap just in case anyone's new and you have no idea what's going on. Now, this recap will lead into my explanation and why I'm quitting keto. I have been overweight pretty much my entire life. It started at age eight, but then it was called husky. Over the decades, I tempted all the diets. I tried every new fad that came along. Shots, drinks, pills, shakes, but I just couldn't find what would work for me and then be able to make it sustainable. Seems like everything worked for a little while, but as soon as I went back to the standard American diet, all the weight came back plus more. By 2006, I was 31 years old, classified as morbidly obese, and weighing in at 330 pounds. I remember my doctor telling me that the odds were against me. Statistically, it was going to be hard for me to lose the amount of weight that I needed to through diet and exercise. I made a very hasty decision to have gastric bypass surgery or RNY. This particular weight loss surgery, they go in, reroute a lot of your digestive system. They cut your stomach down to the size of a grape. This is not going to allow you to have a lot of food intake. So you are forced to eat small amounts, thus losing drastic amounts of weight very quickly. I have not went into much detail about my experience with gastric bypass and the years that followed and how traumatic they were for me. It was 17 years ago at this point. I'm sure a lot has changed since I had my surgery, but back then I was not educated on what to expect. The internet was newer, so researching it wasn't easy. And I definitely was never informed that my stomach was going to stretch back and that if I wasn't careful with what I ate, my diet, that I could possibly gain back every single pound. I'm an all or nothing kind of person. I can become a little obsessive over things. So when I had my weight loss surgery, I followed my doctor's orders to a T and I ended up losing all the weight, 156 pounds. I managed to keep most of the weight off over the next decade, but not because I was being healthy about it. 13 years after my surgery, 
in 2019, I'd started gaining weight back around 70 pounds. I was up to 232 and a tight size 16. My absolutely amazing daughter, Kerrigan, had started keto in January of that year. Over the next two months, I saw her drop a ton of weight. So in March, that's when I started my journey. It wasn't easy. No lifestyle change is, especially in the beginning. But over time, I figured out how to make keto work for me. I managed to lose every single pound I had gained back and then some. I got to a lower weight with keto than I ever had with weight loss surgery. Keto was what I had always been searching for. It was my answer to losing the weight and keeping it off. I felt like I had finally cracked the code, hacked the system where my body was now fat adapted and running on ketones. I had more energy. I slept better. My face finally cleared up. I had battled with cystic acne my entire life. And let's not forget about a huge weight loss. I mean, that's how it all started. I'm not making claims here. I'm just telling you what it did personally for me. Everything was running smoothly. I was at the top of my game. I'd never felt better. Life was great until it wasn't. And that brings me to 2021. In September of that year, I had noticed something was off. I just wasn't feeling normal, if that makes sense. I still had a ton of energy. I was able to go, go, go. But I could eat tons of food. And I was dropping massive amounts of weight. I just knew up here. And I could feel it in my body. Something was off. Went to the doctor. Had some labs drawn. When I got the blood work back, I noticed that my fasting blood glucose was at 300, and I knew that wasn't possible. Something wasn't right. I received a phone call from the nurse telling me that I was a type 2 diabetic. I remember that phone call like it was yesterday. I told her, do not put that in my chart. I reject that diagnosis. I'm getting a second opinion. When I go in to get the second opinion, they've already went over my lab work and I remember the nurse practitioner looking at me and saying, you are the walking definition of type one diabetes. So at 47 years old, I was diagnosed as an insulin dependent diabetic meaning my pancreas is not functioning and it no longer produces the insulin I need so that my blood sugar can be controlled. I will always, for the rest of my life, inject insulin. The past two years have actually been the hardest I have ever went through. I have felt like a complete and total failure because I can't control my blood sugar no matter what I eat, what I do or how hard I try. My blood sugar is constantly up and down and up and down. I have even tried the carnivore diet. If I consume zero carbs, I still end up having a blood sugar spike. At my last endocrinologist appointment in August, I got some answers as to why I'm having such a hard time. Turns out I am sensitive to insulin and I'm also sensitive to food. It all comes back around full circle to the fact that I had gastric bypass surgery. I absorb things differently. So basically, I will always have these ups and downs. The blood sugar spikes make me physically feel horrible. Headaches, fatigue, sometimes even nausea. But it's the blood sugar lows. When it goes down so quickly. That's the problem. Those are life-threatening. And this brings me to the portion of the video where I explain why I am no longer doing keto. When my blood sugar drops so quickly, and oddly enough, it's usually at 3 a.m., I have to consume sugar. Sugar and keto are not friends, but I have to bring my blood sugar up 
so that I don't pass out, go into a diabetic coma, or possibly even die. Because of this daily consumption of sugar, carbs, it has knocked me out of ketosis. And I define being on keto as being fat adapted. You are burning ketones. You're in ketosis. I realize you could talk to a hundred people you're probably going to get a hundred different definitions, explanations, versions of what they think keto is. I don't define keto as a food. I hate it when someone says that's not keto. If you're keeping your carb count low enough and you're burning ketones, you're fat adapted, you're doing keto. It doesn't matter what you eat. But for me, I'm not in ketosis, so I'm not doing keto. Let's just say that I am now on a low carb diet. And my plan is to stay on a low carb diet. It is sustainable for me. Not only is it sustainable, but it has to be. As a type one diabetic, if I consume copious amounts of carbs, then I need to inject more insulin. Insulin doesn't really agree with me. The high carbs would give me a massive blood sugar spike. The insulin would give me that quick drop and there goes that vicious cycle all over again. I plan on doing a low carb diet forever and thankfully I enjoy it. I am not sure if I covered everything or not but I felt like this needed to come out. When you watch my videos what I eat in a day it's still gonna apply to what I eat in a day on keto. Those are keto meals. If I was not having to consume orange juice or jelly beans at 3 a.m., then I would be on a keto diet and burning ketones. It just doesn't work that way for me anymore. Low carb it is. All the videos are going to apply to keto, low carb, weight loss journey. You see where I'm going here? <laughs> I hope I explain that well enough. Seriously, where I have done this video so many times, over the course of a few months. I don't even know what I've said this time as compared to what I've said in the past recordings. Wish me luck. Hopefully this one goes out. Don't leave. Stay. And if you are not already subscribed, I'd love to have you as a member of my YouTube family. Come on over to the Facebook group. I do have TikTok and Instagram and all the social media accounts, although I'm not on them. There's still a ton of content you can watch and everything will be in the description box for you. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I hope you guys understand what's going on, but I'll see you in the next video. Bye.